So in this lesson, I want to talk about making our programs a little bit more exciting and continuing on with our hardware accelerated rendering. So what this means is we're going to talk about texturing. So how can I fill in that rectangle with some texture or some image data? Well, previously we've looked at surfaces, which is one way to load data from our hard disk as a BMP image and display that in STL. Now, one of the problems we had before with that was when we just drew it to the window, we got the full window filled out with the image and it wasn't properly uh, stretched out to fit the screen and so on. So let's go ahead and see how we can work with images, put them on a rectangle and appropriately fit them to a shape. So what I've gone ahead and done in this directory is I've continued from our previous example where we were able to draw SDL rectangles. So just to recap what that looks like and so you can see the full program, we have our window that we've created, we've initialized our video system, we create the window, create our renderer here, which has accelerated uh, hardware rendering. Then we created a rectangle here on the stack so that it's available just to make this program simple. Set our background color that we're gonna draw, which is just a black screen, how we clear the color. And then we just drew a line here and then a rectangle. So what we're gonna wanna improve is how we draw this rectangle. So let's go ahead and start from the top and include some new resources here. So after we've created our renderer here, what we're gonna wanna actually do is create a new surface. And the surface is how we were going to load an image here. So load BMP. And I've included in the images directory a test.bmp image file. So we can go ahead and use that. If you want to see the directory structure, here it is for our project images. And I've included a familiar image just called test.bmp. Now, in order to do texturing, what we're going to want to do is look at 2D accelerated rendering again. And again, notice that the API supports the following features like texture images. And just quickly to explain what a texture is, because sometimes folks get a little bit uh, mixed up with the terminology here, is we have an SDL surface, which we've looked at. And this is just some amount of pixels. So pixels in SDL2. They call them a surface, and this comes from some image data. Now, a texture, on the other hand, will make use of a surface. It needs some way to load in these pixels here for our texture. But the texture is usually, usually defined by being image data that's hosted on the GPU. Usually on the GPU. That's what differentiates them. So that means that the pixels are somewhere in video memory and can be quickly accessed and drawn. Okay, so that's just a little bit on texturing just to keep these terms straight. Okay, so how do we create a textured image? Well, if I go ahead and look at our API and just Google for uh, or search for texture here, you can see we have a few different functions here. We're going to need to eventually destroy our texture, but let's go ahead and work from this one where we create a texture from the surface, which I have available here. So again, what this is doing is typically on most APIs is taking image data and then creating a texture that's on the hardware. So uploading that image data onto your graphics card so that you can use or take advantage of hardware acceleration to draw whatever image that you're trying to draw. So creating a texture from a surface is as simple as specifying what the render is and the surface that you want to create a texture from. So let's go ahead and do that. SDL texture. And I'm just going to call it texture here. SDL create texture from surface and we have our render and our surface right above and once we've uploaded our surface we can actually free our surface so how do we free our surface well i've got to go back into the documentation to remind myself on surfaces and i'm going to go to the index and i believe it's sdl free surface all right, because we're done with it, we've allocated the memory and now we've uploaded it to the GPU. Again, this is something that can be a little bit tricky to keep track of when you need some resource. But once that memory has been copied somewhere else, you effectively don't need it on the CPU unless you want to do other operations. But for now, we're just going to free that surface. So let's go ahead and make this function call here, SDL free surface. And as always, it's polite to free resources when you're done with them. But now I have my texture here. Okay. So now that I have my texture here 
and we'll eventually want to free that texture at the end of our program. So let's go ahead and free our texture. Again, how do we do this? SDL free. And let's see if there's a function here. Well, it's not free. So in that case, the other function is often uh, destroy. So destroy texture. Okay, just like we destroyed the window here. So let's free up our resources to be good programmers. SDL destroy texture, and we just named it texture. Okay, now, how do we actually do something more interesting with this rectangle? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out our previous rectangle that we were drawing, which wasn't filled in. So, what we can do here is we actually can copy from our renderer some of the video memory where we stored it. So, uh, again, stay with me here for a moment, and let's look at our crate texture from surface um, code. And uh, since we've uploaded this uh, surface data to a particular render, which holds all of the state and would have information about the video memory, what we're actually doing or want to achieve is to say, oh, okay, where's that memory? Let's copy it onto the things that we're drawing. So for this, we have a special function called SDL render copy. We can copy a portion of some texture to the current rendering target. That is something that I'm drawing. In this case, it's a uh, rectangle. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function and make use of it. So what I have here is uh, this function, SDL render copy, our render, the texture that we want to draw, and this is our test image, and the source. So in this case, we don't really have a source. We have our texture data, but we actually might want to, at a future date, just pick or constrain which portion of that texture that we're selecting from, and that's what the source can be. So since I want the entire texture in this case, I'm just going to make this null because I want to select the entirety of the texture, our second parameter here, that we're loading from video data and going to paste over our rectangle. And then our destination rectangle, well, this is the rectangle that we had before. So this is a rectangle that I allocated on the stack. That's why I'm passing its address into this function. And let's see what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and run this, and this is from our previous example. No compilation errors, which is good. And I'll run our program. And if I can bring it in, you can see that there's something interesting going here that's a little bit tiny. So let's make our rectangle a little bit bigger. So I'll go into the code. We have to recompile here. Uh, this was 20 by 20. Let's go ahead and make this 200 by 200. And you might want to match this with the perspective of the image, but for now, let's just uh, recompile and rerun. And what we can see here now is our rectangle. So this is pretty cool now. Now we have textured rectangles. We can start bringing in media and assets and start making some more interesting scenes. So hopefully this was useful. You understand a little bit more about what the rendering process is going and how to get hardware accelerated and now textured rectangles into your SDL programs.